new parts. High performance at high pressure. Rebuilding a first stage head with a reed valve. As always, and for your safety, before you start any service work, be sure to turn off any power, depressurize anything you're working on, and be careful of hot surfaces. We suggest placing location marks on head and cylinder. This can be done by using a center punch and making matching peen marks on each component. Make a single mark on the first stage components, two marks on second stage, three on third, and so forth. When reassembling, simply realign the marks. Let's begin by removing the tube connections using your 19 millimeter wrench. Let's also remove the breather tube assembly. Remove the intake filter housing too. You can loosen the clamp using a screwdriver or socket wrench. Using a six millimeter Allen key, let's loosen each of the head bolts. Now, use the 13 millimeter wrench to remove the lock nut. Go ahead now and remove the head bolts. They should be removable by hand, but if not, then use the Allen key. Now lift off the valve head. This might be a little tricky, as sometimes it gets stuck on there, and that's where a razor blade or a little screwdriver comes in handy to free it. Be cautious so as not to cause any damage to the head. It's a good idea to inspect the surfaces of the head to make sure that they are clean. Use a razor blade to scrape it and some Scotch-Brite to brush it clean. Next, we want to remove the old reed valve and again, using the screwdriver, let's pry it free and then lift it off. The thin reeds in these valves develop undetectable fractures and seat wear over time. They cannot be rebuilt and so the reed valve assembly should be discarded. Remove the underside gasket from the cylinder ledge and, as before, scrape the cylinder surface with the razor blade and Scotch-Brite. Not all machines have one and normally you do not need to change the cylinder stud, but if you do, it's a very simple matter of gripping it with vice grips or pliers and unscrewing it and install a new one using Loctite or similar thread sealant. Screw it all the way down, leaving the longer end exposed. Now that we have the cylinder head off, let's rotate the flywheel so that the piston goes all the way down to bottom of stroke and we can inspect all the way down into the cylinder, making sure there are no score marks or damage. Excessive wear might be cause for more extensive repairs. Let's have a look at the head bolt holes as well, ensuring the threads are intact and not pulled. Sometimes repairs can be made using a thread insert. Now, ensure the inside of the head is clean and that all the carbon buildup is removed using decarbonizing agent. Ensure that the throat of the intake stub is clear. Also, let's make sure there are no cracks or imperfections in the head and that the underside is perfectly flat. Wiping it across a piece of emery paper glued to a surface plate will help to clean it up and flatten any high spots. Also, take a look at the intake filter and make sure it's got no imperfections and is clean and has a fresh filter element in it. Okay, with all parts inspected and cleaned, the head is now ready to be reconstructed. Valve installation. You will need to determine which gaskets are called for. There are two versions of this cylinder head. One version looks like this and the newer version looks like this and this will determine which gasket to use. The older version uses this gasket, which fits like so. The newer style uses this gasket, like so. So let's take two head bolts and put them through the holes in the head. That will help us locate the parts. So install the upper cylinder head gasket, locating it on the bolts, and it should line up nicely on the head. Now, take notice that the reed valve is marked top. These four holes are the suction side of the reed valve. So using them as a location indicator, install onto the head, noting that the four suction holes go into the suction pocket. And the word top faces the top of the head. Now, 
Install the underside gasket. You may want to use a little bit of gasket sealant. You can also use silicone sealer in place of gasket sealant, making sure to use the high temperature version. Take a little bit of sealant and apply a thin film around the gasket. That will hold it in place while we assemble all of this. Grasp the head so as to keep it all together and invert the entire assembly and place it onto the cylinder, sliding it down over the stud. Screw the head bolts in by hand. Then, using the torque wrench, tighten the bolts to 18 to 20 foot-pounds. Now, install the lock nut. And let's use a fresh lock nut because each time you install and remove this, it sort of destroys the locking mechanism. Tighten using the 13 millimeter wrench. While we're at it, let's put a fresh O-ring onto the intake stub. Using our O-ring tool, available from new parts, it's quite easy to remove the O-ring and install a new one without damaging it, like such. Now all that's left is to reconnect the tubing, reinstall the breather tube, and the intake filter. One final warning before you start the machine. Let's rotate the flywheel all the way around to ensure that there are no obstruction or interferences with the pistons. Run the compressor briefly to see that first stage comes up to full pressure and is otherwise operating properly. For breathing air, it's always prudent to ensure there are no dangerous fumes being pulled into the intake. An air analysis is recommended after major repair jobs. And that completes the project. As always, the compressor coaches at New Parts are always here to help you. Look us up at 5000psi.com.